right, folks. Well, welcome to Captain Day Sport Fishing. This box is a six hundred dollar box. Well, this is what you have to pay for the privilege of owning a Suzuki outboard. There's six hundred dollars. It's almost as if NASA built this, right? The saga continues with my Suzuki. It is back in the shop for the sheer fact that the lower unit keeps getting salt water in it. So this is the third time now that my motor has been over in at Del Marine for water in the lower unit. Well, hello folks. Thanks for stopping by Captain Dave's Sport Fishing YouTube channel, Jacksonville, Florida. And what you saw there in the beginning was just some excerpts of other videos that I did that were kind of big expenditures in my book. Large stuff, just some, just, you notice I put it in black and white. So that means it was, in the YouTube world, black and white means what was in the past. What I'm gonna show you here is my expenditures that I could even just kind of throw together here. I'm sure there's a lot more of them. So everybody wants a boat. Oh, I want a boat. Well, you know, they go, well, oh, well, you use your boat more. Oh, your expenditures. Yeah, well, guess what? Your expenditures can be at least this. You know, if I had the money, what I would do is I would probably just charter fish all over the place. I would step on, relax, have fun, step off. I mean, I would travel, of course. I'd want to travel and go to other places. I wouldn't want to hang around here, but that's what I do. People always ask me, oh man, you'd probably buy this boat, that boat. Oh yeah, man, if you just had all this money. No, I'm sorry, I don't think so. But here's what I kind of came up to show you. Here's my boat and outboard expenditures for 2019 to present February of 2020. So that's basically, let's call it 14 months. Tax time is coming up. So this is also a nice little list to put together. All right, to start off, one of my largest expenditures of this past year was my 2019 Mercury 15 horsepower EFI Pro Kicker Motor. One motor, $3,600. $3,640. Well, you can't have an outboard without having a way of putting it on your boat. So I bought the Panther outboard swim platform for a 15 horsepower. That was $273.46. But then again, I really didn't have any way to steer it. Okay, so I bought the, ex the extendable U-joint pole from Iron Pacific, and that over here was, as you can see, $56, basically. Then I decided to tie it into my Suzuki 250, and I bought their Panther, um, Marine Tech Panther trolling motor tie bar kit. Oh, that was wonderful. That was 220 bucks. And then, of course, there was some additional hardware, and I ran through an expensive drill bit, so that was about 45 well, that didn't stop there. The next thing was, is I wanted to be able to hitch it to a battery and not have to pull start it all the time. So I bought a really good deep cycle AGM high performance battery. And it was a small battery, a Group U1, about the size of your lawnmower batteries. Well, even that AGM was 105 bucks. Then I bought, you know, a box to put it in, so that was $12. But then again, 
I didn't really have a charger for it. So what happens if I had to charge it? Because it might be sitting, you know, and it's not really getting charged all the time. So I bought a charger. I bought a Dual Pro uh, charger, which Dual Pro chargers are about, you know, they're the top of the line chargers, I have to say. And that was a small uh, little charger, 93 bucks. Well, I got tired of people beating the living hell out of my engine cover with banging it with sinkers and everything. And originally I found this American Patriot outboard motor cover, right? That was my red, white, and blue one with the little American flags. Eh, this is superfluous, you know, but it was a hundred bucks. And I decided, well, you know, I found another one that was more padded. It had felt inside. So I got that one from my Suzuki V6, and that was 108 over here. I don't know if we're being able to see that. Let's see. Let me scooch this over a little bit. Okay. So that was $108. Well, then I really wanted to protect my little Merc 15. So I bought another one just for the Merc 15, which was 65 bucks. Well, then you start getting into your maintenance issues also. Here's a filter, Suzuki, for uh, one of the filters that go on it. That was $18, $18. And then there's another filter, okay? So that was the high-pressure uh, fuel filter. That's 60 bucks. So that one expenditure right there was $89.11. So I was having... Some of those, this is about the time I was starting to have some issues with that fuel cooler on the Suzuki. And so I could really check stuff out. I bought the Suzuki diagnostic software, which was 65. And then you get on down to here and you start getting into more fuel filters, $61. Well, I decided to do both of my thermostats and I spent 160 all right. Well, I knew I wanted to flush the engine out because of that St. John's River mud. So I got the Ridline Mor Marine Portable Flushing Kit, which seemed to be a total waste of time. And uh, their pump was for crap. So on top of this, not only spending $149 on their kit, I spent another $100 at Home Depot on a 1680 gallon submersible pump. But that only came with like a gallon and I would figured I needed some more. So I bought another gallon at $22 and uh, $22. So that kind of brings that up to 230. Well, then I knew I wanted to even do some videos about this and I wanted to have some extra rid lime hanging around because I'm going to put this in my maintenance schedule, of course, as you may have been seeing that I do now every three to four months now, I'm going to be running the rid lime through my engine, and I found actually a deal. A whole case of four-gallon rid lime for 110 bucks. All right. So that was just part of that expenditure. Uh, then there was simple things like I lost a screw, uh, two dollars and forty six cents, and I needed a no ring, a hundred, a dollar seventy seven times seven for my anodes. So then I spent another thirty dollars there, and then down here I bought um, more anodes. That was five dollars and thirty cents times six of them for another forty bucks. And then, of course, you need the O-ring kit for all your interior anodes. So I got that. I only needed two of them at, at $2.03 each. And then I decided to change my water pressure regulating valve. And I needed to cover for it. And the valve, all right, over here. So then that bill turned out to be $48.72. Well, then now I've got a Mercury 15 Pro Kicker, and I didn't have the oil gasket seals for that. So I bought two of those, and they were 80 cents, 87 cents a piece. Okay, no big deal. And then another gasket for the, uh, 
for the Merc. And uh, then I ended up spending $8.34 and then a filter assembly. Again, Suzuki filters at three twenty. dollars I bought two of those so I can change my oil at $26.40. And then that super expensive Suzuki Marine oil. That was actually cheap. That was actually cheap. Over here it was, uh, which you can't see because it's not fitting in the screen here. But I spent $27.71 and I bought four uh, gallons or whatever you call, I guess gallons of Suzuki oil. And I ended up spending another $150. Well, then I needed some Mercury 15 horsepower oil filters. So I bought two of those at $17. Then it got time for the old water pump change out on the Suzuki. So that was a $46 uh, invoice there. But then again, it didn't come with the stainless steel sleeve or something like that. So that was another $15.62 for a total over here of almost 74 more dollars. Well, then I had a huge issue of trying to get my lower unit back on. So I had a lower unit installed and got raped by Casey's Mobile Marine Service for $250 to come on over to my house because I had to charter the next day. And uh, he decided to screw me over by putting, uh, a, you know, having two guys show up. He was about at my house for an hour and a half and he charged me $250 labor to put my lower unit back on because I could not get it on. I just could not. I didn't know the tricks. And you won't know the tricks either. All right. Well, then my uh, power trim and tilt motor decided to kind of shit the bed. Let me turn the camera here a little bit. So my Suzuki power trim and tilt motor shit the bed. And that's what you saw in the beginning of this video. Well, with tax tag and title out the door and shipping, that was $630. Why? Because I had a charter in two to three days after shoot after that thing shit to bed. Well then, of course, it didn't come with an O-ring, so I had to get a $2.81 O-ring that never came from Boats.net, never received it. So in all reality, I had to run to the um, a uh, local dealer and I paid that times two. So it's all turned out to be about another six or eight dollars. Then it was spark plug changing time. Well, the, the NGK spark plugs for the old Suzuki, they're not that expensive, which is pretty good. So that was a $20 thing for the uh, spark plugs. Then I needed to change my actual fuel filter in the boat. And how I do that is by having spares. Always have spares of everything. And those verses just one ray core because these are just filter elements that I could put in my Marpac uh, clear view filter. I got four of those for $36. Well, then I kind of wanted uh, some rubber mats for my deck. So I have two of those and that was $64. Then as you saw in the video in the beginning, I kept having constant water getting in my lower unit and they finally got around after three times of doing that. And the lower unit reseal job uh, at Dell was $429. But then I had it done again after hitting a rock in the St. John's River and it bent my prop. And I bought the parts and that was 150 bucks, but I you know, spent 250 in labor to have it resealed 12 months later all over again. But then I needed a prop to get fixed, so that was another 250 to have the prop sent off and get uh, all remanufactured, basically. So then, not long ago in some videos, you saw that my oxygen sensor decided to be all carboned up and shit to bed on me then. All right, so I bought a Suzuki oxygen sensor. Why? Because I had like a charter the next day or two days later and I needed to go. So I had to go to boats.net. 
that auction sensor was $175.20 with UPS overnight shipping. Well, then one of the last videos you just saw was I sent my oil away for analysis. That was $28. So then I also picked up some extra oil filters, Sierra oil filters, so I could always have them on hand because, of course, what am I doing now? I'm not waiting 100 hours to change my oil. I am doing it more frequently. So those two filters were $39. And then I had basic hatch lids, um, latches that didn't want to work. Well, they were old. They were the original ones. So I bought two more and I went from beautiful stainless steel ones to cheapy plastic ones because maybe they'll actually last longer. And they were $17. So then, of course, I had to buy uh, lower unit, or not lower unit oil. I bought um, two gallons of super premium synthetic blend four-stroke oil, Starbright, because I used it all by changing my oil. And I bought two gallons of that, which was $30 for a $60 bill. And then I ended up getting a lot of gear oil, I bought four containers of gear oil to have on hand since I'm now scared to death that the lower unit is going to be constantly filling up with salt water and I will have to be changing it out, which I don't know, but that was another $28. Okay, so when that boils down to it, I kind of did the math. Just for 14 months, the last 14 months, what you just saw right here on this screen adds up to a grand total of $7,784. All right, that's just expenditures in 14 months. All right, divide that, $7,784, and I'm sure there's other items that I forgot about. You divide that by 14 months, and you run into $556 per month for the last 14 months, just on keeping the boat and the low, uh, the uh, two engines on the back, the 15 uh, Pro Kicker and the Suzuki 250, just keeping them running the best I possibly can and always have it running so when I have a charter, I actually can go. So I have to pay more because I have to get parts overnighted. I have to pay exped expedited shipping constantly. So, you take the $7,784, you divide that by 14 months, and we come up with a grand total of $556 a month in just basic maintenance and keeping the boat running. That's on top of insurance, taxes, and not even counting the fuel that has to go through my truck, my truck maintenance, okay, diesel, in my truck and non-ethanol in the two outboard engines that go into the boat. So go ahead, buy a boat. Go ahead, buy a boat. If I could do it all over again, I don't know. But <laughs> it's just one of those things. So to reiterate, all this just here, and I probably forgot half of it. It's probably more in the $10,000 from 2019 to presently in February 2020. It's probably really closer to ten grand. okay? Divide that by 14 months, and with the ten grand, you're probably looking at $650 to $700 per month just on keeping things going and keeping this charter business running. And that's not adding anything to do with insurance, taxes, tags, registrations. My insurance is almost $1,200 a year. The truck to get it to the boat ramp. That's an important part that everybody always forgets about because you're not towing your boat with your little Toyota Camry. So thanks for watching. This was just a little uh, pre-tax day. Let's go through what it really costs. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.